Welcome to Walking in the Word, the biblical teaching arm of the Women World Leaders podcast. My name is Julie Jenkins, and I'm honored to be your host. Women World Leaders is a ministry based out of South Florida, and we just celebrated our second birthday. Our mission is to empower, edify, and support women to walk in their God-given purpose as a leader for Christ in this world. We are all leaders for Christ, whether we lead hundreds or whether we lead one, every role in every life is important. We would love you to join us on our journey. You can find out all we do and get involved by visiting us on our website at womenworldleaders.com or joining our Facebook page. In this, our Wednesday edition of our podcast, we have been walking through the book of Ephesians together, uncovering truths, attributes of God, and direction for our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. Today, we will be examining chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. Allow me to pray for us, and then I will read today's scripture verses out of the New Living Translation. Most Holy God, we are honored to walk as your servants in this world, and we give you this time for you to teach us your ways. I pray for each woman listening today, whether she is in her car or walking or enjoying a quiet moment on her couch, or or even if she is wondering if she should even be listening to this today. I ask you to meet her where she is and to anoint her today for all that you have called her to do. Father, it is through your word that we become equipped as your servants, and I ask you to honor each woman as she takes the step of obedience today by opening your word, whether that be literally with her Bible in her lap or figuratively, as she hears your words spoken into her life. Father, make these next few minutes fruitful, as only you can. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens, so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. It's always important as we study the word to look at both the cultural context and the literary context, like a lawyer who can pluck out pieces of conversations in order to make the accused appear guilty or innocent. We can make the Bible seem to say almost anything we want by taking the statements out of context. Sometimes, if we aren't careful, we can misinterpret the words of the Bible without even knowing it. 
if we unco- or if we cover ourselves in prayer before reading and study attentively and responsibly, the Holy Spirit will guide us into truth. The context of these verses is that Paul is writing to the believers in Ephesus and everywhere, right down to us today, to strengthen us in our Christian faith and to explain the purpose of the church. As chapter 4 began, Paul taught that we are each called to live worthy of, of the calling of unity, to live as one in the Spirit of God. And now in today's reading, he begins with verse 7 with the word, However, however he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Though we are to walk in unity and are indeed are one in Christ, we are all individually gifted and called to a specific role within the body of Christ. Have you ever been to the symphony? Some people, when they go to the symphony, will close their eyes and soak in the music as a whole, letting it fill every fiber of their being, enjoying the unity of the moment. Perhaps because of my analytical mind, when I go to the symphony, I pull the scene apart, (laughs) amazed by each individual playing his or her own instrument I think about the hours of individual practice, the stories that must be behind each musician sitting in each chair. I wonder, what did she have to give up to be prepared for tonight? Or who in the audience is secretly cheering her on? I watch the percussionist float from instrument to instrument, always knowing the precise time and place to move. And I wonder how he can keep it all straight. And I marvel at the conductor, straining to pull out more fullness from one section while holding back another, aware of every nuance of the music and of each musician. The body of Christ is much like a symphony orchestra. Though we are called to work in unity, we can only produce the beautiful music intended if we each use the individual giftings that we have been given for the good of the whole. Paul, in his writings throughout scripture, gives three lists of spiritual gifts that God bestows upon his people for the orchestration of the church, which are all necessary for the creation of beautiful music that God intended us to make. This list written here is not an exhaustive list, but rather a sub-list, These are the people that God has put in place, as Paul says, to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. Paul names those who have received these particular gifts as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Let's look at each of these musicians individually. First, the apostle. Translated as a delegate, messenger, one sent forth with, a, with orders, theologians have defined the term apostle as one who was sent to give witness of the resurrection from a first-hand experience. Strictly speaking, then, there are no apostles alive in today's world, but we still learn from the teachings of the apostles as we read the word of God and what a necessary part they have played throughout these days. Without their obedience to write, even sometimes while in prison, as Paul wrote these words, generations of people, including you and me, would not have had the ability to go back to those first-hand accounts of the resurrection. The word prophet has been defined widely ranging from an interpreter of oracles or other hidden things to a poet. If you compare the use of the word prophet throughout scripture, again, we should always use context when studying the Bible. Paul's use of prophet seems to convey a definition somewhere in the middle. One who is moved by the spirit of God and who declares what he has received by that inspiration. Paul's own explanation of the purpose of prophecy is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. 
He says the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Who doesn't need strengthening, encouragement, and comfort? I believe we do have those who are gifted prophetically today, though we must always rely on the Holy Spirit within us first and foremost, praying for discernment, even as we learn from others. I myself have been blessed every week as I listen to Journeying into Joy, hosted by Carrie Christopher, our Friday episode of the Women World Leaders podcast that focuses on giving strength, encouragement, and comfort from the Holy Spirit. Paul next speaks of the evangelist. Identified as bearers of the good news, we are all on some level called to be evangelists. And yet there are those individuals who are given this specific gifting and calling. I remember leading a group of women through a Bible study and there was this one woman who came in every single week with yet another amazing God story of how God had positioned her to share the name of Jesus. The light of Jesus shone through her eyes even as she recounted the happenings each week. I found myself praying for her encounters before they even occurred and looking expectantly to what she was going to say, just knowing that God was using her as an evangelist in our very city. Finally, Paul talks of pastors and teachers. A pastor is a is, pastor is translated as a shepherd, one who cares for and watches out for others. And a teacher is one who teaches concerning the things of God and the duties of man. No matter how educated and seasoned we are, God has more to teach us. And there are certain people in the body of Christ whom God has gifted for this service. Paul says that these gifts are given by Christ to the church and will continue being given until all come to unity and maturity in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standards of Christ until the music is completed. Praise God that though it has been 2,000 years, and we still haven't reached the point of maturity, the song is not yet over. God promises that he won't give up on us, and that one day we will no longer be mature, immature, and we will no longer be tossed and blown about by whatever we hear, and we will no longer be tricked by lies that sound like the truth. And in unified obedience, we can move one step closer to this promised crescendo today. Together, we can each play our part by using the gifts that God has given us to create the amazing music that he is orchestrating and conducting. God is working in and through us in love, making us more like him as we each do our work and help each other grow. What has God gifted you to do? The church, when working as God created it, is like the most polished professional orchestra. Each musician is given the gift and ability to play her own part. Each part is unique and each part is necessary. Your part is unique. Your part is necessary. As the body of Christ, we have the most amazing conducting conductor orchestrating the music of our lives. He understands each musician, knows her backstory, can hear each note of music in advance, and guides each instrument. Will you vow today to follow the lead of the great conductor, trusting in his perfect gifting for the part he has called you to play? Father God, you are the great orchestrator and conductor of our lives. You gift us each individually that we may work in perfect unity as we each play the part that you created for us before we were even born. God, remind your daughter listening today that you are sovereign, in control, 
and that your plans for her are greater than she could ask or imagine. Empower her in your spirit to walk in the calling that you have given her, to soar even as the music of her life soars. Give her strength to step away from that which is not of you and to stand united with all the saints and angels as she walks in your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to Women World Leaders Podcast. Join us each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as we explore together God's extravagant love and your courageous purpose. Visit our website at www.womenworldleaders.com to submit a prayer request, register for an upcoming event, and support the ministry. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written consent.